Hit record, man. I'm good. Already. Go ahead. I'm recording. Okay. Everybody, uh, welcome to Chapter 4 of The First Age, The Doom of Dorthonian. This is our campaign set in the first age of Middle-earth, based uh, loosely around the Silmarillion. And we are using the forthcoming D10 dice pool system called Heroes and Hardships, created by our very own Tetnak, who is with us today. Tet will be playing Estadir, and the ever-lovely and very British and only, only somewhat Canadian Wanderer will be playing uh, Terenian who is Estadir's little older and wiser uncle. Although, when you're thousands of years old, I don't know how much older Terranian actually is. So, <laughs> <laughs> Or how much wiser he really is. Or how much wiser. <laughs> but without uh, further ado, we'll take it away. Let me place your tokens here. All right. Can you see okay? Yep. This is great art. I think that's from uh, Tour First Edition or something. Mm, that's, it looks like John, nice. Hodge, John Hodgkins or yeah. whatever his name is. John Hodges. Introduction. Chapter 4. <clears throat> Two days have passed since Estadir and Turenian set out from the ruins of Ladros. With them, in train, are dozens of refugees, survivors of the mayhem wrought upon Dorthonian by the Dagor Bracolach. Though they have taken care to move with stealth, the once bright eaves of the forest are now dark and full of shadows. In the gloom, you may hear the cackle of orcs or the snarl of wolves as your home is overrun by the slaves of Morgoth. Indeed, Dorthonian is no more. Henceforth, it will be known as Tower Mufuin, the Forest of Shadows. Bear here and his son, Beren, have stayed back. In their grief, they mean to make war upon the enemy to the last, and perhaps aid any survivors in this blighted land. But you have been charged with leading the refugees of Ladros to Brethil, a large forest to the south and west of Dorthonian. This land is thought to be safe behind the protection of the mighty river Sirion and the elven fortress of the same name. With you is also Arthad, brother of Quiet. He keeps to himself, at times scouting ahead and at other times departing from camp, only to return with a brace of conies or deer. But the animals are diseased more often than not, and hopelessness and despair is writ plainly on the man's face. Let me grab Arthad here. There's your boy Arthad. And just to give you a reminder of, ge uh, of uh, geography, um, so you know Ladros is up here. Um, in the northeast of Dorthonian. And you've traveled kind of to the south and to the west. And your goal is to get the refugees to the forest of Brethel here. Where are we now? Uh, just, you know, right, right around here somewhere okay. on your way. Okay. So so Arid Gorgoroth would be on your left side. Uh, you'd be going through what's known now as Tar Nufuin, but used to be Dorthonian. Um, the way I kind of imagine this is the transformation of, of Greenwood into Mirkwood mm -hmm. ever ever since the, the battle, battle of Sudden Flame. And now everything's just being corrupted and you're, you're leading the span of refugees through the forest. How, and, how uh, long has it been since it the away. beginning of uh, Morgoth's return? Like generally a couple weeks, a couple months? Uh, you, it's been months. Okay. You were under, uh, uh, the vampire spell for some time. 
uh, you've surmised. And so you lost some lost some weeks there. Mm-hmm. But after meeting back up with the House of Bayor, they've kind of filled you in on everything that has happened. Okay. And I'll let you take it away. Um, I can start. Uh, so, Esadir is walking through this forest that he knew fairly well. He might not have been uh, this far south very often, sticking to the courts of uh, Galadriel's brothers. Um, he uh, looks at the darkening trees and the corruption that's obvious on every branch and every leaf, every blade of grass and every shrub. He frowns as the animals uh, don't scatter as much as they would. Instead, they stand closer than they should, not scared of them, but corrupted and crazed in some sort of foul madness. Uh, He um, looks somber as he leads everyone through this area, probably knowing it uh, very well, as his uncle has been closer to Angband and uh, besieging the enemy for so long. Uh, This was his home, and uh, he feels a great remorse as he sees it in this state. Uh, He... It's very solemn as he passes through, not speaking as much as usual. And uh, when he does strum his uh, harp, it's softly as he knows that any loud noises might welcome the enemy to them. And so he can't even sing a remorseful song. Instead, he walks uh, forward quietly and in silence. Jorenian is, um, he's kind of changed again. Esther may have glimpsed a little more vulnerability in him when it was just the two of them. Um, But now he has a group to lead again and people who um, might perhaps despair if given the chance. So he is, the mask of leadership has fallen back on him again, particularly because so many of these are humans and he feels he's upholding the honor of the the elder um he doesn't spend too much time looking at the forest he's seen the corruption of angband before and so it saddens him immeasurably to see it fall upon this once fair forest he he knows what will be happening um and instead he focuses on two things the path ahead um, and making way safely, and secondly, the the people he is leading, uh, making sure that no one strays, no one falls behind, no one loses hope, um, and uh, he pushes himself hard to uh, to ensure that the the group stays together and stays focused. Um, and if nothing else, well, you know, he has. He has many words to try and uh, encourage people to uh, to keep hope that they might get out of this. And where nothing else works, he will tell them there'll be time for despair later. Get to somewhere safe, then let yourself despair. Um, but he will um, be very focused on those two things. As you travel south and to the west, the sun begins to set and travels over arid Gorgoroth and starts to sink down to the west. And uh, the shadows lengthen, reaching out to you like tendrils uh, of oppressive, uh, shadowy darkness reaching into your hearts, turning an anested ear. Um, as it gets darker and darker, um, Arthad kind of comes your way from up the trail. Uh, he's one of the few that does have a horse still. And he pulls up his horse, and you can see um, slung over the saddle uh, is a, a, a brace of conies. There's like three rabbits there, uh, but you can see that their pelts are, are dark and mottled. And he kind of has a frown on his face and picks the rabbits off of the saddle and throws it to the side of the trail. Again, nothing. 
I fear, my elven friends, that survival is hopeless. Just up ahead, though, there is a spring. I was brave enough to taste it. And the water is fresh enough. I suggest we we stop for the evening. Leah, one of the women up front, she she, she has grown dark. Her children even tarry behind her. I, I fear for their safety. Dark of mood, or do you think some of the corruption of the enemy has fallen her on her? Does it matter, Tyrannian? Are they not one and the same? The shadow from the north reaches further and further south, and yet we flee. It pains my heart to run this way, although I do think it is our only chance of survival. Would I be back with my leader, my captain, Barry here? Instead, I am here mourning a dead sister, leading refugees to the forest of Brethel. Tyrrhenian's expression doesn't change too much while Arthad's talking, but um, a key, if anyone were watching him really closely, they'd have seen that when he mentions a dead sister, there's a tightness around Tyrrhenian's eyes um, and at the corner of his mouth. And uh, it just goes a little bit more rigid for a second, but it passes as he gains control of himself once again. But could that be guilt? He looks at Arthad and says, Your captain would have you here doing your duty, and you do it well. These are your people. You have a duty to them, not just to fight, but to see them to safety. For it is their protection, for their protection, that you fight. Always. And uh, he says, You are... It is a shame that your skills in hunting and trapping go to waste. But there will come a time when we have gone, we have travelled beyond the reach of the shadow. And there you will be feeding us all. So despair not. Lead us to this spring. For every day that we survive is a day further from the enemy. Further from the shadow and closer to home. And as he says those last words, he just raises his voice just a little bit so that others can hear. Um, and then he says, uh, show me this Leah of whom you speak. Arthad uh, nods, nods kind of som somberly and uh, turns his horse around. As he does, he looks down to where he threw the diseased rabbits to the side of the trail. And you, you see a a fox could spring out of, the, out of the undergrowth and with a rustle and a snarl it, it grabs the diseased rabbits the fox itself looks like completely emaciated and it just drags the carcasses back underneath the shrubbery and you hear uh, snarling for a brief second as several beasts no doubt fight over this minuscule amount of meat that may give them sustenance in the dying days of Dorthonian. Narthad kind of sneers to himself. Very well. I will lead you to Leah. But it is folly. He mutters to himself atop his horse. Fool. A fool I am. Hopeless, a hopeless fool. To think that fate would spare me the pain of the Battle of Sudden Flame. For I have lost my family, Tyrrhenian. Despite your glad words, they will not come back. Mine only sister, my only sister, and you, he kind of points at you. You elves, you brought this upon all our heads. He raises his voice. And not just my dear, lovely, quiet, but the wife of Bera here. And do not forget thine own sister and niece, elves, thine own kin. He spits down the ground, kinslayers indeed. A curse upon you. A curse upon your house and your dreadful, sad, eternal lives. <laughs> I will take the gift of Iru Ilubatar. Indeed, indeed, I shall die gladly and soon of despair. I will go into that dark night, knowing that you will still walk this middle earth 
atoning for your careless deeds. Can you make it sooner than later? Your prattle is boring me. <laughs> yeah, he just will march off towards the spring unless you guys say anything. Yeah, actually, Tredian will grab the reins of Arthad's horse and he'll raise himself to his full height and says, It is true that there is a burden upon us. A burden of guilt for failing to save those you talk of, you speak of. However, an ill judgment is not kin slaying. And you are, your words are rash and foolish. Uncle, he is a of... human. What else would he speak? When your life is but the flickering of a flame, all you can do is speak rashly. Let him go. I think we hear the despair of the shadow upon us all. These lands are dark. It is easy to have your mood turned here. And again, he's speaking up a little bit for the benefit of the, uh, the people. But this shadow, for us it will be a passing thing. We will return to lands fair and free, away from its influence. And there we will join those who stand against it. This is the legacy of the Eldar. This is the legacy of your people too, Arthad. This is what your captain would have you do. Will you do your captain's bidding? You give me a leadership? Leadership roll? Sure, let me have a quick look. Or something else if you got it. Uh, or rhetoric, maybe. Got, yeah, because I've got some... Um, I've got uh, wise words now, so yeah. rhetoric um, or leadership would be good. Either one. Okay, let me let me try rhetoric. I think. Tiana would be uh, 20, 21. Oof. It seems like Oof, a very pretty... very apt rhetoric roll. Yeah, I'm just trying to find rhetoric now. Okay. Ooh, it's under maybe communications. I for... Yeah, I'm just wondering if I should have gone for leadership because I'm better at it. Hold on, influence. What is, what, what, is, what, what is wise words do? Um, it gives you my gives you my status as a modifier, so I'll get a plus ah, three. Gotcha. Um, I'm just trying. I can't find leadership suddenly. Where is it? Oh, it's under willpower. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to go for I'm going to go for leadership instead. Uh, you have all your wounds and stuff. Uh, let me see. Make sure you don't have any anything on board. No, I don't think I've got anything. I didn't see anything in the wrong. Oh, terrible roll. What's your status, yeah. though? Three? So 19? Uh, no, no, this is just 16. I get it on rhetoric, not leadership. So, um, uh, Arthad uh, looks at you, and he seems about to say something, and then he just casts his gaze down to the trail again. And uh, next to him is walking... Uh, a man, just one of the commoners. You, you may have seen him in the past, and his name is Brendan. And he looks up to Terenian as well, and he seems to be about to say something and just shakes his head and looks down. And uh, the morale of the refugees goes down by one point. You're down to two. Two out of five. And so this morale thing is, is a scale between zero and five. You don't want to get to zero. Uh, bad stuff starts to happening. Um, but I, I would use this to trigger Haunted for both of you guys as he just brought up all the bad stuff that mm -hmm, would have happened. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a level three uh, mental hazard against fortitude. Yeah. Go ahead and roll. Uh, uh, you roll 5d10, bow, and keep yep. three. Yep. So exploding. There is that button, the uh, exploding D10s, yep. but oh my God, we're screwed. No, that's a, that's all. That's Oof. all of them. I, I keep three of them. So. Oh yeah, so uh, uh, so thirty six. Yeah, we're still 36. screwed. <laughs> Eek. Well, no, if you keep three, isn't that uh, twenty three? Oh, keep okay, three. Oh, yeah, twenty nine. Right, 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 twenty nine. Not that it's gonna do us any good. Nope. 
So uh, twenty nine. Well, uh, it, it would be more than twenty nine. It would be uh, it'd be thirty, right? But keep three, so oh, twenty four. Yeah, thirty, and then and then you add 30. add the ranks of five. So it's going to be thirty five versus whatever we rolled. Right. So thirty five. Uh, so thirty five minus twenty three, and thirty five minus twenty two. Yeah. Yep. Twelve for me. 13 for him. Uh, 12 versus my terror level gives me a trauma. Uh, it doesn't give me uh, something. It gives me basically an injury for as long as you want it to be. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what uh, what his is. Uh, Terenian's terror level is trauma. Your trauma level 7, so you would take a, uh, a trauma. Yeah. So basically, an injury, right? Yeah. Uh huh. I mean, for me, I don't know if is his seven as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. Then yes. Mm -hmm. It's just like wound. Just goes against those instead. Okay, I'm giving myself a wound. No, you got an injury. So, uh, oh, so sorry. if you if you if you look at your terror level, trauma level, trauma is like the same thing as an injury. So. Oh, uh, okay. And then terror would be wound. Yeah. I guess. Okay. Cool. So I'll let you guys kind of role play this as like the whole train kind of goes on ahead of you. The sun is setting and you guys are kind of in the back of the train and maybe like the words of Arthad maybe cut deeper than intended. Um, Estadir looks to his uncle and just shakes his head. These men, they, they are here but it's a short time. They do not have the strength of will as the Eldar. Perhaps he's right. This is wasted time for us. We could be attempting to find Gondolin and save our own people instead of these refugees. What chance do they have? And, uh, Terenian, um, as the, you know, as they, as they kind of stop and let the uh the people pass by them and go ahead he lets some of this mask drop and he just looks tired really tired and uh he says uh, perhaps all this folly for so many years i warned our kin of the power and menace of our foe his malice, his long arm and longer, longer planning. I was more right than I dared fear. What can we do against such malice, such cruelty, such power? This is not orcs that we can fight. The shadow creeps through the woods and corrupts and destroys. Even the beasts suffer. Nothing escapes our enemies' cruel malice. How can we fight that? We can't not alone. We must find our kin through them and likely... The children of Feanor, perhaps, but us by ourselves? Look at our home, it is a ruin, a dark shadow, almost as if a nightmare of what it was once. How can we do anything if the enemy can do this to us? It has not been that long, and look. Eventually it will creep all over this Middle Earth and Belerand, and then what will we have? We will die and be reborn in the halls of Mandos to fight again, perhaps? <sighs> perhaps. <laughs> and then, what if his reach crosses the sea to Valinor? To Amon itself? What will we do then? Will our candles be extinguished as he did the trees? He shrugs. I have no, I have no certainty. 
to hold to anymore. I can no longer feel the light of hope in this place. Dark place leads to dark thoughts, but it is hard to see hope. He um, looks down. Part of me would laugh at the idea that our enemy could stretch his hand to Valinor itself. The trees, they show that his malice, his cruel schemes can reach even there. As it was in the early days, Uncle, perhaps it is wise for us to untether ourselves from this weight of these people. If we cannot withstand the doom that has come and this darkness that is clouding us, how can they? Leave them to their fate and ours to our own. Trillian shakes his head and then some of the old steel seems to come back into his eyes. He says, no. This, and he sort of sweeps a hand towards the forest, this I cannot change. This I cannot control. All that is within my purview now is my own heart, my word, my deeds. Arth had may name me Kinslayer, but he will not name me Oathbreaker too. We are the cause of the death of Barahir's family. We No. We were simply there. We are not the cause of the death of his family. <laughs> we did we not call them. We were not even there by our own volition. Woken up from a slumber from one of the enemy's servants and thrown into combat before we were really awake, before we really were aware of what was happening. And with their loss, we have lost more. We have lost our kin. They are not the only ones that suffer. Suffering is not a man thing. It is not just men that feel. For their lives are short and ours are infinite. Do we not suffer more when we live longer and there are more to suffer, especially in these days? I, we have more to gain, more to praise, more to love and sing. Our lives are sweet. But those days are long behind us. How many days do we have, Uncle, of this terror, of this walking darkness if we live? Perhaps all our lives will be short, equal to the humans. But eventually we will be reborn in the halls of Mandos to face this once more. Over and over again, how long will we suffer? However long we suffer. I will tell you this, I gave my word, and I will be bound by it, I will be bound, bound beyond death. My word must have meaning. In times such as this, when all is shadow and doubt, sometimes simple certainties are all we have. And my simple certainty is this. I will not go back on my word to Barry here. Yes. But, yeah, he just shrugs. But there is wisdom in your words, nephew. We cannot travel through this shadow much longer. I think a harder but shorter road might serve us better. And he looks up towards the mountains to their south. I believe we should ask Arthad to start seeking a pass through these mountains. The mountain road will be harsh, but I would rather 
die by cold or by a fall than by the slow corruption of the shadow. And starvation. There's no food to be had here. We must leave this place regardless. Yes. And the mountains are our shortest route away from the shadow. Very well. I would rather give people the hardships of the mountains to consume their thought than the creeping doom of the shadow and its influence over this land. And uh, he does something that he may never have done before. He, uh, or maybe once or twice, he reaches out a hand and if, if uh, Estadir doesn't move, he puts a hand on Estadir's shoulder and just gives it a slight squeeze. And says, we will win through this, Estadir. We will win through to our people. He looks a bit shocked. Um, he probably flinches uh, at first, just kind of uh, not expecting it. And he looks um, at his uncle quite, uh, not surprised, more almost blank, um, like almost he's like looking through him. Like it was so much of a surprise that he just, instead of his mouth agape, he does it in a very elven way. Um, very, <laughs> you know, stoic, just kind of looking you know, blankly forward as if he's looking like, like to the back of his uncle's head and just says, perhaps if so, and, I will sing again. And, uh, Trenian nods. And then he says, your, your parents would be proud to see you at this moment. There is more strength in you than I realized, Esther dear. And then he takes a deep breath and seems to, he seems to realize, you know, for, for him, this is practically, you know, just like collapsing with emotion. So he kind of gets a little bit of a hold on himself and he sort of takes a deep breath and says, and we will need all that strength for the mountain road will be a harsh one. These people do not have the strength of the Eldar, or even of human warriors. They are old and young. They are weak of body and mind. We must be their strength. And then he nods to Estir and wheels on his on his heel, pulls himself upright, and is once again this uh, this stoic mask. <laughs> he watches his uncle go, and he's kind of ripped from the horrible scenery and everything he had been thinking before and it's replaced with utter shock and now that no one's there he kind of gives his head a shake and rubs his brow well i am and he begins to mumble to himself just kind of uh completely confused and surprised and uh, he will slowly take his... I don't... Do I even have my horse anymore? I don't remember. Um, he uh, follows his uncle, nonetheless. Eaten. They're all eaten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, you're going to try to approach Arthad and, and convince him to, to help you guys pick a way through the mountains to the south. Sounds like. So let me uh, see if I can Yeah. give you... Okay. Um, so let me just move your tokens just so you can see the map here a little bit. So instead of like going all the way to the pass and heading south, you want to cut through the mountains and then, and then cut over. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, in normal okay. times, that would be a terrible, terrible route and it's still going to be a lot harder, but, um, it, it's kind of physical hardship rather than this kind of despair and, you know, the anguish of the shadow. Plus we're probably gotcha. just plus we're gonna just starve to death if we just sit here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's there's probably more food in the mountains even though in normal times there'll be a lot less. Got it. At least there won't be none. Got it. Wonderful.
So let's do this. Fire. So you guys make camp near the spring that night. And uh, you find Arthad kind of sitting just outside, just outside uh, the firelight. Um, basically, he has his hood kind of pulled up over his head, Strider style. And he has one small little blast pinch of tobacco that he produces out of a pouch of his belt. And he tucks it neatly into the bowl of his pipe and blue smoke is around him as he kind of pouts off in the corner. And uh, Terenian walks up to him and says, Arthad, do you stand ready to do the will of your captain? <laughs> I'm sorry. I was deep in thought. In, yes. such a, in such a place our thoughts can take a dark turn. Indeed they have. Yeah. I've had more than enough time to run into. Mull over my words. I spoke harshly and rashly earlier. I do not know what has gotten into me. This place, it, it pulls at one's heart. It tortures one's soul. Tyrion, Tyrion nods, and then he looks up at these sort of towering peaks to the south of them, and you, I presume they're they're tall and snow capped, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so they're pretty f a pretty formidable obstacle, and he looks at Arthad and says, "My thoughts tend in one direction, Arthad. Oh, which is that." Uh, a journey of hardship to the body is easier than one of hardship to the soul. I would rather die to cold than to despair and madness in the shadow. What say you? You dang cross the mountains to the south, Ered Gorgoroth. You are a bold Terenian, but I did not think you a fool. <laughs> In times such as these, all paths seem folly. I dare say you may be correct. Uh, Arthad takes a long drag from his pipe. <sighs> Although I do see the reason in it. The shadow presses ever harder on the souls of the men and women of Ledros. They have already suffered much. Their husbands, their wives slain. Their children ripped from their arms, torn to shred by the wolves of Sauron. Perhaps there is a certain reason to your plan, Turinian. Brisk mountain air. There's nothing to focus the mind like physical hardship. Yes, yes. I will scout the path through the mountains, but do you know what lies on the other side of the arid Gorgoroth, Turinian? Beasts. Beasts with... Them. Eight legs and as many eyes. Terrible things. And, uh, Trinian sighs and looks up and says, I, I have seen them. We have fought them. They are not to be taken lightly. But... The corruption upon this place will be an end of us. Dark paths and hardship are better than certain death. It's, I share your mind. And if we do meet death, I'd rather meet it at the hands of an enemy than a slow, tortured death of starvation and hopelessness. And Trinian gives that little sort of his, his his more usual kind of smile, little tight smile, and uh, nods and says, "And in that I see the courage of men. It is good to have you back, Arthur." So, in the morning, 
Tonight we will let them sleep. I will tell them only that we will be leaving the corruption of this place behind. In the morning I will give them the news of the hard roads that lie ahead. But we, we, the strong amongst us, we must be their courage. We must be their the strong backs, the strong arms, the strong legs that they will carry them through the hardships that lie ahead. For your words ring, your words are true. This path is well, in other times I would say near certain death. In these times, I would say a chance, a chance of safety, a chance of life. A chance of uh, a life again beyond the shadow. For that I will risk much. He nods at Arthur. Very well. I will make my way to the south to find a pass between the crags and the mountains, the dry riverbeds. Through Arid Gorgoroth I will scout a path. Unto Nun Dungwatheb beyond, dark land of spiders. We must be cautious if we make it that far, my old friend. Then we shall turn to the west and seek the river. Only then will we be safe. Only then. Estadir is thinking in his mind that he doesn't even know that that's true, but he doesn't say anything. Yeah, Geranium's actually aware of that too, but he's not, <laughs> not even going to raise that possibility. <laughs> Let's just not talk about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the night passes, and let me turn the night um, sounds to morning sounds. Go I ahead. Just, I was just going to say that before we, we sleep, uh, Geranium will do what he said. He will speak to the refugees. He'll go among them and say, you know, Sleep well, for tomorrow we will be leaving the reach of this shadow for cleaner air. Um, and say, and, and uh, there are hard roads ahead of us, but we will not stay under this, under the corruption of the shadow. Sleep well, and know that tomorrow you will breathe clean air. Leadership. Give you a chance to bring it back okay. to uh, three. Oh, fingers crossed. Okay, give me a sec. 21. Right, sorry. Uh... Oh. <laughs> dear, oh dear, that is not a good roll. Plus your injuries. Okay. Yeah. That didn't help. Yeah. Yeah. Still, still would only been 17. Yeah. Yeah. I've been seeing some bad rolls lately. Yeah, I didn't roll that badly, but I, I needed to roll fairly well, and I didn't. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they, they all go to bed, um, but they're just so tired. And they, they, they've slept several nights beneath these uh, these eaves that are just uh, just dark and dark and oppressive. Um, but then the morning comes, and uh, as you wake up, Arthad is already gone, and. Um, I'll let you guys role play what it looks like as he starts to lead them to the south. Uh, waiting, wait, and, you know, I guess you'll probably start to the south. You'd probably wait for him to come back from scouting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's say, let's say, uh, maybe it takes a day then? Yeah, we'll, we'll get people to kind of refill their water skins in this clean water and mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. rest because they're going to get They've got a tough journey ahead of them. Just tell them to get rest and, uh, you know, do whatever they need to. Um, and uh, yeah, rest their bodies and minds. Got it, got it. 
So yeah, yeah. Eventually, though, um, in the late afternoon, um, Arthad does come back. Um, he looks just emaciated and worn out. Uh, the tip of his nose is red. Uh, his cheeks are very hollow. And he says to the both of you, There is indeed a way. There is a path. My fathers of old traveled it. When traveling to the forest realm of Goriath, we have elves and friends there. But it is a tough road. It has not been well kept. The only bit of good news I must pass along is I did not spy any enemies. Perhaps it is too harsh for even the servants of Morgoth. And in that, may I lie our salvation. Take heart, good scout. You have served your captain well, and your people. Do you think there will be food on the road, even a little? There are some few roots, some mountain berries, but no. It is a harsh land. More rocks than trees. Then we should make this journey quickly. Yes. Very well. And Terenian uh, um, says to our pet, take what rest you may, if we will leave shortly. And he um, goes and speaks speaks to the people and he kind of raises his voice and says good people of Laedros the time has come for us to journey away from this place our journey will be one of hardship for we will journey through the mountains our good scout here Arthad has found a path the enemy has no knowledge of Take a bit of a liberty there, but, um, and says the journey will be. And he looks and says, the journey will be grueling. You will be tested, but you are men and women and children of Laedros. Show the enemy. Show him that that means something. Show him that there is strength in your blood, that this hardship will not grind you down, but instead raise you to heights of achievement, to heights of, and uh, ah, to great deeds. Um, he's getting tired and his words are failing him a little bit. And he says, he says now gather your belongings Make them fast, and set your minds to the south, for we journey away from the shadow. And uh, he walks to their head and uh, starts to uh, you know, kind of gather up all his gear and uh, make them ready. And, make, and he, you know, he's visibly kind of checking his weapons and trying to look competent. That roll is still high enough to attack. Yeah, I was just, just like, you know. It must have been one of those ones where, like, uh, mm -hmm. it was, isn't there that bug where, like, if you don't bring it up from zero or something? Yeah. I think that's probably what it was. It's the it's the train thing. You have to, you yeah. have, to mm -hmm. have it at zero because... That's what it was. So, um... As Arthad turns his horse around, he kind of smirks. And you can see... Uh, slung across the back of his horse is this uh, deer, and with that, like all the all the refugees start to cheer and stuff, and kind of gather around Arthad and unsling this deer from his horse and bring him into camp, and they quickly butcher this deer and uh, prepare a little bit of food for the journey. And Arthad says to you. I am sorry about my words yesterday. Perhaps this can make some amends. 
Up in the mountains, there are stags. Not many of them, but I did find one. Perhaps this will bolster the spirits of the men and women as we cross the mountains. Renian nods to him and says, Your deeds will make recompense. Already I can see that with the that away from the shadow you will become yourself again. Uh good. I put their uh their morale back up to three. Me. And I'll let you guys Tell me what it looks like as you take your first steps up into the mountains. Um, Terenian will be at the head. And he is... He's back in that sort of full sort of like I will let myself show no weakness kind of mode. He um, He's very upright, very tall. He's kind of surreptitiously kind of cleaned off his armor. Um, I mean, he tends to keep it as clean as he can anyway, but he's surreptitiously giving it just a little bit of polish so the light will catch it. Um, and uh, he will force himself, no matter how tired he is, he will force himself to stride ahead. Not too fast, because he doesn't want to set too fast a pace. But he will look determined and uh, unbowed by his experiences, no matter what he's feeling inside. Yeah, Estadir is um, not not as uh, bold. He uh, is walking along with the others uh, more towards the front. Uh, he's just morose, uh, knowing that this is going to be a very difficult crossing and is not expecting most of the refugees to make it, honestly. But he knows that there's really probably no other way for them to survive at all because of various things, the corruption of the forest, the lack of food, etc. So, he just uh, pushes forward wordlessly at this point. So, as you go higher and higher up into the mountains, indeed, uh, the grade starts to increase probably would start off early in the morning the only good part is that the oppression of the forest seems to have dropped away and the air filling your lungs is full of the fragrance of wildflowers initially and then it just becomes the cold clean air of the mountains um after the first several hours you are almost at the cloud line and if you look behind you the train of people just disappears in the mist of clouds as the clouds kind of move from the west to the east, kind of floating around your head. Uh, so now we'll make our first round of checks. And I'll let you guys kind of tell me, like, how you want to do this. You can do survival. You can just sheer leadership. You could... I've, I've been do, doing really badly, so I'll let, uh, let Ted do, 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 do something else, you know, clever to try to get them through this. Just use your own creativity i suppose now whatever you do um i will give you one benefit from arthad helping out and le helping lead the men so oh well i mean i think for estadir it would be um survival uh he's tries to uh, make himself useful from his days in Dorthonian. Uh, he's probably never been over these mountains, but uh, he um, tries to keep the large group of people uh, in uh, single file lines when they need to be, um, so they can easily pass through, but it's going to slow things down, and he knows, so he's trying to do it as orderly as possible for these uh, large group of people. Well, I'll do the first check as survival. I guess. We can, we can do it. 21. I'm not very good at survival, but... Cool. Um, 
One benefit, you said? Mm-hmm. Unless uh, Trini wants to help in some way. Hey! Hey! That didn't explode either, did it? I believe it did, yeah. No, it didn't. I don't know. That's weird. Yeah, let me try something. But Yeah, I mean, the the train thing updates when... I, th I, I think, think when you go... updates when you, when you change the value. Yeah. So uh, if you've kind of added it to a, an existing carriage sheet, you might need to go and... Yeah, because <coughs> yeah, I, 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 just, I, just, I just want to try it again. It could also be the, um, the macros pulling the wrong thing. Uh, it could not be pulling... Uh, Get those bad ones out of the way. Yeah, I'm just looking. Okay, yeah, that one that worked. One that, one that, that was from the sheet. I wonder if um, I wonder if these were made with an earlier. Um, I can tell you in two seconds. No, that should have worked. Okay, whatever. Um, so let me just. Uh, I had one that's just just to see. Uh, one D10. So yeah, my uh, 31 or 32 is my roll. Oh, that's that's, that's definitely enough. So, yeah. Uh, morale, morale actually goes up one. It's a four, so that's good. So you get to the top of the mountain, uh, like like the uh, the ridge line. So what does it look like as you kind of look down uh, across the plain below? It's like wooded. It's not like a diseased wood, but it's just like a dense woodland. Um, and behind you is uh, what used to be Dorthonian. You can role play that for me and. Role play how you've made it through and all the refugees are fairly intact. Yeah, Estadir gets to the uh, crest of the path that they're uh, crossing uh, and the suddenly the um, fog kind of begins to lift as uh, they look down uh, as they continue to travel. And as it does, you just see this very dense forest beneath them uh, and behind them the gnarled dark forest that they are leaving as everyone kind of goes up and over in this single file or two by two line uh, through the narrow path that uh, Arthad has uh, found them. Yeah. <coughs> and Terenian with, with the head of the column but as they get to this point he'll be He'll stop and let everyone sort of file past him. He'll uh, he'll give Arthur an approving nod. He'll you know as people go past, he'll look. You know anyone who needs help, he'll try and get someone else to help them and stuff. So kind of check the state of the the column and he'll he'll give a few words to everyone as they as they pass. Um, and uh, um, as finally as Estadir passes, he will nod to him appro approvingly and said say well done nephew and he will then uh, take a couple of steps back and look down at the forest and then just to himself he, he says he says very very quietly farewell Dothonian and he looks like he's searching for more words but there's there's nothing good he can say at this point yeah the, the forest is you know has been home to his people for so long but now it's just a place of corruption and evil and there's nothing else he can say so his his mouth kind of opens and closes a couple of times and then he kind of shakes his head and turns away from Dorthonian as if as if he's kind of wrenching himself away from this sight and then uh, pulls himself upright strides back past the people and again kind of a few words to people as he goes past picks up people who have fallen um you know perhaps carries some of the children for a little little part of the way and then uh, makes his way back to the start of the head of the column and uh carries on can we lose our injury now our haunted injury since we've made it out of there yep yeah, I think mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, Estadir, as he sees this, he, he and he hears his uncle speak to him. He's kind of surprised that they've made it. It wasn't uh, as harrowing as he expected, um, and he kind of like is bolstered with confidence that he might be able to do this, and that they might not die. Um, 
and uh, he feels uh, a glimmer of hope as he sees the forest beneath him. I was just looking actually, and uh, Tredian still got this wolf bite. Actually, that hasn't hasn't healed. I guess I, I should make a uh, I should make a uh, a roll for that at some point. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can. Um, well, but probably you crest and then like half the way on the way down, you probably with that good of a, a survival roll, you find like a, a a cave or a an overhang like well out of the elements. You're able to kind of get everybody in there and huddle huddle together, perhaps build a fire and even cook some of the venison uh, for the humans. Uh, and they're gathered around the fire speaking in hushed voices and uh, Trinian and Estadir you kind of stretch out next to the fire and even though you've been on the road for a long time I guess some healing would take place so you can make your roll yeah he's got a negative 2 to strength still and dex um, so something has to happen who's going to heal yeah. him is the question <laughs> yeah I don't know it's however you want to play it but he's badly injured yeah, I'd forgotten that. So that's probably probably been kind of affecting him all, all this time. He's yeah, it makes sense. It's been it was a pretty horrible wound because it nearly killed him. So uh, yeah, um, who, I guess no one heal. Is there anybody you can heal? And if not, he's gonna have to just do a recovery roll. Yeah, I mean he'll go looking among the um, among the humans for if there's any. Yeah, we'll say we'll say Leah. Let's say Leah can do it. Okay. So you find her. She's she's um, you have like three or four fires, I guess, in this cave, um, and she's near one of them. She has two children. Um, one of her children is is uh, currently suckling, and the other one is like asleep in some swaddling clothes in a uh, kind of a, a crib she made out of out of branches and, and old grasses that she found, and uh, she's kind of stripping away like a venison from a what looks to be like a rib bone or something like that there's grime all over her face her eyes are kind of sunken into her cheeks she's obviously very hungry yeah. uh, Trinian says here allow me and he will he will pick it up and you know he's he's got one more hand free than her so he'll um, he'll just uh, with you know, pull out a a knife and with practiced ease he will uh, he'll strip the meat off the the bone and uh, and give it to her well thank you you didn't have to do that please please also let me apologize for my kinsman Arthur is a capable man but his temper is something to behold it was not just temper the shadow lay upon us all that was why this hard road was our only choice. <sighs> but I, uh, I know that together, as one company, we shall win through. And uh, now I have come to ask you for your aid. But perhaps uh, a little later, and he, uh, he kind of. Uh, you know, averting his gaze, kind of, um, <laughs> you know, uh, um, uh, tactfully, he kind of like makes a sort of sideways nod to the uh, to the to the, uh, the infant. She's got a, got her chest, and he says, uh, "I will return uh, a little later when you are less busy, and uh, then perhaps if you would take a look at my wound." <laughs> oh, don't be bashful, elf. If it's not this one, it's going to be his brother. Oh, well, what'd be wrong with you? It's, it's not the way of my people, but uh, very well. And he um, he kind of stops and then uh, goes to take off his armor. And it's at that point, you know, that the 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 pain is is more obvious, and his you know his his he, he's very slow to take off the armor. And uh, there's some some wincing, and he he pulls it off, and then his you know his uh, 
his sort of um, gambeson and his uh, shirt underneath he takes off uh, and uh, yeah underneath that yeah he reveals this horrendous bite wound oh 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 dearie me it's a wonder you still draw breath ha huh. and it's also an old wound hmm. if you were a man or woman that would be festering by now but you elves are a queer sort Yes, I... I'll come visit you soon. I'll see what I can do for that wound. I'm going to need some time. I have some small number of herbs in my satchel. I'll boil some water. Find what clean cloths I can scrounge up. I at least owe it to you for leading us over these mountains. And, um, Trenian inclines his head to her and says, You have my thanks. And uh, he um, yeah. He turns and uh, that Leah so, talking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he turns and uh, makes his way back to one of the other fires. Yeah, putting his shirt on before he goes. Um, and uh, he um sort of carries his his armor and his his gambeson, but he's uh, he's yeah at least puts his his shirt back on. But it's 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 you know, for anyone who's looking carefully, it's pretty obvious that although he's trying to pull himself upright, he's not making a great job of it at the moment. The tiredness plus the plus the wound are really weighing him down at the moment. And uh, you'll say just um, just before just before dawn, um, when everybody else is kind of getting up and ready to go. Leah visits you, Trinian, and she's made a poultice of some pungent smelling herbs. It smells very fresh and clean, almost minty, like a eucalyptus scent. And she brings with us uh, what looks to be a, uh, a kettle that's steaming with, with water. You can certainly see it even up at this high altitude. And he says, she says, are you ready? I ain't going to say this is going to feel nice. Uh, Trillian nods to her and says I have been a soldier for many generations of your kind I am not new to pain do what you must alright what 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 TN does she have to hit 31 yep alright um Probably under mental. Yeah, it's under mental. It's an intelligence roll. There you go. I'm not going to give her any benefits or anything just because she's really working. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> Alright, so. Do, do, do. Didn't explode anything either. Uh, five. So would that go away, or does that convert to an injury? No, it's no, it goes away. Yeah, nice. So just the fact that you're an elf means that infection hasn't set in yet or anything like that, Tyranny. And then so she's able to suture up your wound and she covers it with this poultice. And as you feel it pressed against your flesh, you smell that refreshing eucalyptus type sense and, and your body is uh, just rejuvenated. And uh, Leah says, now, now don't, don't push it over the next few days. Even an elf needs to rest after a wound such as this. But I think I think you're going to heal up just fine. Um, Trinian looks quite surprised. Yeah, because much though he was yeah, he would have been telling her that he had great faith in her abilities. He he didn't actually have much faith in the ability of hu of a human healer. Um 
so he's actually pleasantly surprised that she seems to have made a really neat job and it's sewn up and it's still painful and, and sore and stiff but you know he can he can see she's made a good job and that you know there's a good chance of this healing really well and he um he nods at her and says you have my gratitude i thank you he says you have some skill in this I will remember this. And he kind of gently kind of flicks his shoulder and kind of grimaces a little bit. And he's just trying to slowly work it and just feel the limitations and nods to her again and says, Sleep well. Yeah. Here. So, so it's not actually everything gets healed. It's still only partially healed. So oh, okay. um, it would be just two of your attribute points as you desire, since there was four. So you could do one and one, or all of one. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um. Does it ever go back to normal, or no? If, well, it's not fully healed. It's treated one time right now, so uh -huh, uh -huh. it can be oh, it can right, be right, treated right. again. Um, okay. So it's, uh, it's like if you had a, if you had a longer it, longer rest or something. Yeah, or just a, you get to heal, you get to treat uh, wounds twice. Uh, so basically, the way it works is uh, on a critical wound, which it is. Um, you can eat. Uh, so she rolled a thirty-six. It was a thirty-one. So the healing roll meets the total success values that cause a wound plus five. So heal two attribute points. And uh, so that's that first healing. And then uh, there's another chance to heal it, um, which she would need to get, uh, or whoever did it would need to get that same thing to clear them all up. And if okay. if a wound is left untreated by any that you know any margin, those become flaws, and you just take a, a negative to your your attribute score forever. Oh, harsh. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to say it's healed the dex because, like I said, he's slowly just working well, it, I, working on your strength is zero though, which is technically you should at oh. least heal one of those. Oh, okay, then I'll have to be one on one. Okay. It's, uh, cool. Your okay. strength that was totally dropped still. Yeah, that's why he was unconscious. Remember? Because anytime your attribute. Never quit. At any time your attribute is zero, you you're out. Mm. Well, we probably should have done that beforehand, huh? Yeah, but I don't think we remembered, so. Yeah, there's a lot going. On. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't so think you... he got off that lightly, so it's, I think it's no, no, <laughs> didn't get off that lightly. Yeah, I was like, so, I was like looking at your wound level, and I couldn't figure out why it was not the same, why it was, you know, not full, and that's why, because your strength was zero. But anyway, so I just, I would just mark that wound as treated. Yes, I have done. Cool. Thank you. And what's the rank on it? Uh, it's thirty-one. Oh, it's it's uh, a no, it's, it's crit. It was critical. I'm almost positive, or the worst. Okay. One of the worst one. It was the worst. It Terrible. was the worst. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah. So next time she heals it, it's going to be plus five difficulty, because it's an Ooh. older wound. So to be, she'll have to be to thirty six. And there's also how many days wounded? I don't remember. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of that. Just that doesn't really matter. That's more for like if um you don't have any. Uh, way to treat it. It's like when does your automatic uh, okay. recovery uh, checks happen? Oh, okay, cool. And those the, probably uh, like like in the book you said like so, some games it makes sense, some games. Yeah, yeah. It's it in in the book it says you know basically uh so you know quick healings every one day in character every one session and then normal healings every seven days every, or every two sessions and slow healings every fourteen days or three sessions. Basically, just Got it. whatever the GM wants. So you come down the mountains uh, in, into the forest, and um, it's a different type of fear now. It's it's not the fear, the oppression of the forest. So every once in a while, 
all of you, even the humans here, just skittering through the forest. Uh, Arthad scouts up ahead. Every now and again, he kind of says, you know, go to the left, go to the right. And you even pass, like, giant spider webs at one point. Um, and Trenny and Nestia, you're all too familiar um, with the type of things that dwell near Eric Gorgoroth, and especially near Nandangorthev, uh, south of the mountains. So I'll let you kind of role play this as you kind of pick your way through the forest. And then again, like your last check uh, on this journey type of thing, um, as you as you make your way towards the river Mendan, which would be the first river you have to, have to cross, um, hmm. uh, to see what the morale is of the refugees after you reach it. Yeah, Estadir yeah. has his bow and arrows out just very, very, very uh, cautiously looking about as he remembers the last time they were in such a position and uh, remembering uh, <laughs> remembering the predicament they were in with many of Tyrrhenian's men killed. He is uh, particularly uh, watchful of the stragglers um, coming up behind or anyone that gets away from the group. He makes them kind of come into formation to stay close. Yeah, at one point, both of Leah's sons start to cry. Uh, one of them is over her back, like Papu style, and the other one's like in a sling in the front, and she's just desperately trying to hush them. Hush, hush, no, child. No, don't cry. Don't cry. We don't want any unwanted attention. Estadir goes up to them, and he, he'll look at the, tries to get the baby's attention, and he uh, begins to hum them a old uh, elvish lullaby that he knows uh, from his parents sung to him. Uh, that he does not uh, really sing in public at all, actually. And this would be the first time he's ever sung it to anyone else. He he had um, uh, sung it to himself uh, from time to time, just like in in uh, times of remembering his, remembering his family or uh, that sort of thing. So can I do a perform role to get them to shut up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What should the TN be? Because it's not like a heroic level two TN. It'd be challenging, but it'd be like normal challenging. Uh, let me look. Fourteen is is normal challenging, uh, and PL one, PL two challenging is twenty one. Yeah, I'd say be the fourteen. Be fourteen. All right. I actually, there you go. I actually could have bumped that. Would have both of them. Just, yeah, tell me uh, what that looks like. Yeah, he just he sings this. <laughs> This song about uh, Valinor and the two trees uh, is kind of like a you know an old fabled song. Uh, you know, it talks about the light uh, of the two trees that expanded over the world and etc. etc. And his cadence is very soothing. It almost doesn't matter what words he speaks. The kids probably don't even. Uh, understand it. I don't know how old they are, but um, you know, it's just more the melodic singing of this elvish warrior poet who uh, has sung for many years in the court of elven lords, and certainly he has a voice of an angel. <laughs> <laughs> and and despite the the the, the quick uh, double paced march that her mother that their mother is kept up on, uh, Estevere's lilting voice puts these two, uh, no doubt, hungry and ornery boys to sleep. Uh, but even as that happens, they're skittering. This gets louder and louder, and, and almost voices you could hear, not human voices, not elvish voices, not even the growling voice of that dastardly hound of Sauron for back in Ladros. These are just mocking voices that, that whisper rumors through the woods that they know who Terenian and Estevir are. They stalk and creak through the woods. They creep, leading lost lambs, shepherds of the weak. Oh, there go the bright warriors. It is said they fought our mother and yet live. Nay, nay, no one evades the mother. Attack them. No, I dare not suffer the bright warriors. Let mother eat them. 
the land south of the mountains are ours now. <laughs> and they get louder and louder, these voice voices, as you head through the woods. Uh, eventually, you hear a rushing water uh, ahead of you and make your last survival leadership or whatever, whatever it is to see what the morale of the uh, refugees is uh, as you reach this river and the, the voices of who knows what. It's getting louder and louder. Um, Terenian's going to try something a little different. Um, what he's going to do is he figures the best thing he could do from Ral is, is to address these voices. So what he does is he kind of stands at the back and as the voices whisper, he challenges them. You know, he uh, his his voice is cold and contemptuous, and you know he holds his blade aloft, and says, and he calls out into the darkness. You whisper like fools. You have not the courage to come and face my blade. Even your mother shrunk from it. She felt it. Who will come and taste it? Come. Face the Noldor. And um, what he's going to do is he's going to start talking about all the times in, um, in uh, you know, how he's, how he's led, led men through these lands and killed spiders many times. Um, and uh, how that they are, they're outmatched, basically. That they're just, you know, they're just skittering spiders in the darkness. Whereas he and uh, Estadir are uh, among the great of the Noldor. Estadir is um, looking very uh, like, are you sure you want to do this? Get <laughs> type of look, you know, side eye. Um, and he's going to use status um, to try and uh, bolster yeah. the um, bolster the people, and you know, effectively say to them, you know, worry ye not. This is uh, this is uh, we we will win through this by by uh, strength of arms and. Uh, yeah, so we're going to uh, let's try it. Status. Oh, status is pretty good actually. Twenty-one. You get a bonus on. Oh. Oh my. Oh, 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 oh. One of them. Oh my gosh! Exploded. It almost exploded four times. So I'm gonna let you play this how you want. But you get. So this is how it works. Like you get to the river, right? And you can even see the trees. Um, to the east, so opposite the river, they start to sway, like something giant is coming down through the trees, and you hear skittering like above you. And as you raise your blade aloft, I want to give your speech and tell me what you say because they're all just going to melt back off into the east. Yeah. They don't want to tangle with you. They don't want to tangle with you guys. Um, and, uh, uh, Terenian kind of lifts lifts the uh, the sword loft again and says, "Come, come, who will taste the steel of the Noldor? Steel forged by those who have the light of Valinor in their eyes. Our blood is the blood of the West, and you will never taste it. You are skitterers in darkness. You are creatures of cowardice and numbers. We have courage." We have bright blades, and we will not falter. And uh, he just, uh, as the, you know, he's been backing away to stay with the refugees, but as they get close to the, um, to the uh, river, he just stops and plants the bottom of his shield, you know, the bottom tip of his shield in the dirt, and says, here I will stand. Who among you has the courage to step forth? As you say that, uh, you hear voices say, No, not I, not I. There are tastier treats and easier meals to the east. No, no. I will not face the bright warriors. Flee, flee. Come with me, my children. We will suckle on easier treats. And then the, that menace just seems to fade away back. Uh, into the east, and um, you know, let you guys kind of role play what that looks like. Yeah. So Terenian actually turns to Estadir at that point. I suspect Estadir was standing fairly close to him with his bow drawn, and Terenian turns to him and sort of lets out a breath, 
and uh, it probably becomes quite obvious at that point that to uh, Esther dear that he was just bluffing for all he was worth. Um, um, Esther kind of gives a head of a, sh you know, the shake of a head, and well, I guess they were impressed. Did not know you well, knew the mi mind of a spider so well, Uncle. Uh, they are not that dissimilar to the orcs. Their strength is in numbers, not in courage. But uh, when I saw that movement, I feared that their mother was among them and that she might have more courage. <sighs> but... <laughs> it appears none of them had. <laughs> this day, we may part, we may cross unmolested. And uh, he smiles, one of those rare fleeting smiles. And um, starts heading back to the uh, head of the column. Arthad pulls up along you. Terenian, Lord Elf. Never again will I speak ill of the house of Tin Orphan. Your light, bright blade saved many of my kin this day. My words were foolish. Thrice have I apologized and thrice been made a fool. Consider myself a friend of the house of Tin Orphan from henceforth. Badly do we accept you as a friend. Your words are forgotten. There were words spoken under the shadow. And these things are best not spoken of. Now we stand under the light, and we see your true nature. Lead on, good scout. Indeed. My heart is lifted, not only by your bright, bright blade, Tyrannian, but by the lovely words and talent of your nephew, as to here. Never have I heard such a voice. Elf, perhaps there will again come a day when we can gather beneath the stars in friendship and sing the praise of Ayuvatar Iru. For those days are not yet here. This stream still stands between us and freedom. And in the lands of Dimbar and Sirion beyond that, it is my opinion that we should make haste. We should not tarry any longer for glad words. Yes, let us leave this forest, get to, and uh, make our way to cleaner lands. Yeah, Esadir nods and says, As we go, there are other sounds of song, if you can only listen. Listen to the babbling brook, the birds. The quiet squeaks of animals, which were once all so present in our home of Dothonian, do not be quick to dismiss a place like this, even if it is infested with creatures such as spiders. There are those things out there in the woods that you should know. Every bird that chirps, every bee that buzzes, and every brook that babbles is truth to what was once was what was once and what we must fight to keep it is not just men or eldar but everything that lives for we are all one in this place and he looks forward and he would uh start to cross Trenian heeding his words does actually stop. He realizes how it's been longer than he can think of since he looked at a forest and saw its beauty rather than saw it as a hiding place for enemies or looked for some trace of corruption there or orcs hiding in the in the undergrowth. And he stops, closes his eyes and takes a deep breath. It smells the scent of the forest, listens to the sound of the birds and the sound of the river. And his heart lightens a little. 
and he gives a half smile and a deep breath and then lets the breath out slowly opens his eyes and then once again the mask of leadership is in place and he walks to the front uh, walks towards the front of the column and starts helping actually to the back of the column starts helping people cross um but he seems a little refreshed now Uh, the morale of the uh, of the refugees is high. It's five out of five now. Ooh, nice. So at, after you cross the river, you come into the land of Dimbar. As far as you know it, this land is uh, mostly knee-high grasses swaying in a, a breeze. Uh, the smell of sulfur and ash uh, from the north has not yet reached this far kind of stopped by the mountains um, and as you go from east to west the sun goes overhead and warms your uh, warms your soul you're able to stop for a leisurely lunch uh, Leah finds a crop of uh, wild raspberries and you're able to fill your bellies on that as you eat the last of the venison as well and as you travel further you even strike along what seems to be an ancient road uh, and as you travel down that ancient road you look to your right and you see a forest filled with dense trees the, their, their leaves gleaming green in the in the early afternoon sun and you look away towards the road and you, you look towards the forest again it's is your are your eyes playing tricks on you is uh, I want you both to give me a lore roll. Uh, is there is there lore in this system? There is lore, isn't Yes, there? it's under oh, knowledge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, an easy one, so 14. Oh, good. I've got a couple of good benefits to lore. I get a plus six total. Nice. And, um... I can't remember my... My jack-of-all-trades. Okay. Um... Hey... I, I'm terrible at lore, so I don't expect this to work for me, but... Oh. Both of you. Uh, both of you know this road, and both of you can see what's going down, going on in the, in the dale uh, down the gentle slope to your right. Uh, this road was there before you even crossed the Helker X. Um, and goes far, far, far to the east and maybe even stretches all the way to the ocean to the west. And it seems to your eyes that darting in and out among the trees themselves, which for some reason seem to be moving, look like smaller trees. And you see something you know as the Ents. Um, you can approach them or not approach them, but you can see like this forest is very slowly moving if you can think of like an undulating ocean right the trees are just kind of undulating if you look away and you look back it's like they're 50 yards different then and then you see every once in a while because you're so far away the 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 giant towering shake of another tree kind of exit the forest and let out a then enter the forest again like it's shepherding the trees Nice. Um, how far away do they, do they say? Uh, they're several hundred yards away from you guys now. The forest is moving slowly, slowly from the west to the east. You know um, these as Ents. You know uh, very old creatures. Rumor is that the Sylvan Elves, uh, or even your ancestors that wo woke underneath the stars far to the east, way back thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, ages ago, taught certain trees to speak. And these trees were blessed, blessed by Yavanna and uh, has shepherded the forests of Middle-earth ever since. Um, Terenian uh, will turn to Estadir and says, says, 
is a many, many a year since I have seen the shepherds of the forest. I would speak with them and hear what news they have to tell. Will you join me, nephew? Yeah, Estadir is completely flabbergasted. He has heard of these things, but he has certainly never seen one. And he, he like breaks his elven uh, visage, and he's, he is a bit slack-jawed. And he just gives a nod. Yes, I... Yes, let's... Let's just go. This is... Yes, he's just, like, kind of out of sorts. And, uh, Trinian will ask Arthur to lead the refugees on and so, so they'll basically catch them up. Um, and then as he and Trinian walk down towards the... To the, towards the Ents, he says, uh, I have never before conversed with them. Once in my youth, I saw them from afar. But I... I have long desired to speak with them. I never thought I would see one. And now, of all places and at of all times, mm-hmm. what do you think they're t- doing? In these times, I did not think to ever see them again. Perhaps they flee the shadow, but their ways are not our ways. They, they are shepherds of the forest, and their thought is always upon the forest. Not upon the affairs of the Eldar and of men, or of orcs, or of the Shadow. Their thought is upon the forest. But, as we have seen, the Shadow threatens everything, the forests, as well as us. And he, he, he kind of shrugs in the end and just says, We will... I do not know their mind. We can but ask. And uh, there a is oh. a yeah. I'm sorry. Um, no. <laughs> let me uh, let me pull a bow here. Uh, so uh, Estadir thinks I had a song, a poem of the Ints taught to me when I was younger, in my youth. When spring unfolds. The bitchin' leaf and sap is in the bow. When light is on the will, wild wood stream and wind is on the brow, when stride is long and breath is deep and keen the mountain air, come back to me, come back to me, and say my land is fair. When spring is come to garth and field and corn is in the blade, when blossom like a shining snow is on the orchard laid, when sun and shower upon the earth with fragrance fills the air, I linger here and will not come because my land is fair. And he kind of trails off and doesn't say anything else, but he's thinking of the rest of this, of this poem that he knows about ents and ent wives, and uh, thinks he doesn't doesn't continue on with it. But um, yeah. Never before have I heard that. (laughs) And he gives a little half smile. And, uh... Says, uh... The land is indeed fair. And... Looks thoughtful for a moment and then... Nods and, uh... Heads on towards the Ents. And as he gets a little closer... He raises a hand and, um calls out loudly enough to be heard, but not sort of raucously, calls out, Shepherds of the forest, will you tarry a while? I would speak with you. Uh, The nearest to you, walking along a stream, uh, her, what passes for legs or roots splashing in the cool, bright water, uh, she turns to you. And she sways in the breeze. Uh, she almost looks like a willow tree. Ah, the firstborn. Fanghorn? Fanghorn, come hither. The firstborn have graced us with their presence. And you hear from deep within the forest. Ooh. Ooh. My dear. 
Who comes to our forests? Elves? Elves. And then just uh, probably twice as tall as Fen Brickle, you see this giant a tree-like creature emerged from the forest and he bends over Trent and you can hear like the creaking sound of wood as he does so. Mm. So the firstborn still live. We were afraid you had all passed to the west. It does my heart glad. Uh, it does. Uh, it makes my heart glad to know that the shepherds of the forest still walk among the trees of this Middle Earth. The shadow falls. A shadow falls upon the north, and not far from here, the forest sicken. These are dark times, but seeing these forests in such times. Makes my heart glad. I would ask you, what news do you have? News? What news do I have? <laughs> news, it seems, you already know. My friends, the grass, the trees to the north beyond the mountain. Their spirits rise in the form of ash and dust. The enemy moves, and so the trees move. The forests move if we are to survive. Fimbrethel and I, we are not hasty folk, but we will lead our trees to the east if it means we live to see another age. Uh, Terenian nods and kind of grimaces slightly and says very well uh, I wish you safety and a smooth journey may your forest long be safe uh, Fem Brethel kind of circles around you and um, kind of bows over Estadir Whose voice was it that I heard raised in song and poem not long ago? Estadir, yeah, he, he is smiling like a child. He, he doesn't have usually a... He's not a very gleeful person um, in most cases. He's kind of... Uh, most of his songs are, you know morose and uh, he can sing uh, at court more uplifting songs but uh, yeah mostly he's kind of like that brooding emo singer if you will uh, but he he looks up and he has just literally got uh, the biggest shitting grin on his face I it is I I learned a limerick when I was young about uh, your fair kind and it came to mind. I haven't thought of it or sang it for many, many years. Well, it gladdens my roots and the heart of my trunk to hear your words, firstborn. Never mind my husband. They call him Fangholm around here. But let's not be hasty. We pass to the east, and for some reason you still seek danger traveling west. Come now, sing with me, firstborn. And she tries to grab you up with her arms and put you down amongst her branches and kind of sway through the meadows, swinging as she does so, if you would allow her to do oh, that. Oh, he, he, allows, he allows it for sure. He look, but as he's being pulled up, he kind of looks down at his uncle, like with wide eyes, like he's on a roll. You know, you know, he's like almost like a kid on a roller coaster. He's just so enamored by what's happening. And he, as she starts to sing, it's almost uh, like all these other ent wives come out of the woods and interspersed between them, or, or, or like 
larger, thicker ents. Uh, ent wives look like willows and beech trees, and the ents are more like maples and oaks. And you hear her voice start to kind of raise in song. Merrily and free we go with thee, leaf and tree, bow and branch through meadows green and for and stamp. Through pasture and valley we are the shepherds of trees, Tall and strong, they grow among blue rivers that sparkle in the sun. But night has come. Evening comes and a shadow falls, and our roots falter. A doom descends on verdant plains, and to the east we roam with the Ents, who of old learned to speak beneath the stars. And she says to you, Why go to the west, firstborn? There is only danger. Come with us, come with me, I beseech thee, Fangorn and friends, unto the end. Let's travel over the mountains to the east, shall we? And you see you see the refugees kind of disappear kind of over the horizon. Um, they, don't, they probably aren't even aware that you are speaking with the Ents and the Ents at this point. Yeah, Estadir looks to, down to his uncle and says... Perhaps we could. Uh, we could, we could go and grab the men, and bring them with us. I don't see why they could not. And uh, Terenian shakes his head just slightly and says, "We will take these refugees the last little way to their destination." And fulfill our word and then as you have long been saying nephew we must rejoin our people and then our destination is not for us to decide any longer but what? what lords remain among our people will have our loyalty but there could be others of our kind to the east perhaps it is our duty to go there and find our kin and he, he kind of just throws it out there, not that he's really excited excited about it, but to repopulate our our lines. What if we are the only ones that could survive? We have an opportunity to go with the Ents now. I, we could, the humans could come with us. And, um... Trenian shakes his head again and says, I will not lose faith in our kin. I must believe that Tulsirian still stands and other fastnesses. We have seen the weight of the enemy's stroke upon those lands that were closest, but these lands are further. They... They will stand longer. We cannot lose hope in our people. And uh, he turns to the Ents and says, I wish you luck upon your roads, but ours, led, ours, led, uh, ours leads west, as the paths of the Noldor will always do. Uh, he gives them his sort of usual tight smile and says I wish you and your forest well for what it, for what will it gain us what will it gain us if the elves stand and the forests fall our hearts would forever be broken go and live in peace uh, Fanghorns looms over turning the elves are not much different than us. Long lived, though we ents are last even longer. I think we have not set yet seen the last of the firstborn. We will continue to the east. May you have speed upon your journey. Although speed is not a word that I am 
hasty to use. <laughs> and he um, reaches down with a giant hand and scoops something out of the stream like a, a giant, uh, 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 like his, his water flowing through his hands. And he, he seems to blow on it. And this water just starts to shimmer and shine and turns this brilliant, uh, life-giving hue of green. Have you a flask, First Orm? Uh, I expect we do, yeah. Yep. Ouch. So I'll kind of, sort of pat myself down and, uh, and find something and hold it out. I'm sure. He'll just, like, reach his hand over towards you and hear the creaking of boughs and wood bending and that water that life-giving stuff just goes into your flask and says this is the only gift i can impart to you they call it an end draft may it be an ally in times of pain and trinian nods and says uh such a gift many princes could not give thank you shepherd and uh he nods and um uh if if trenian's uh, if esther has got a flask he'll sort of pour half into uh into his as well i mean esther uh, uh is he still in fembrethel's arms Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want to. Uh, yeah. If she if she sits him down, he I I kind of see her kind of maybe she just like leans down and kind of puts him on the ground, and as she does, he like lets his arm like linger on her, you know what would be her hands I guess, and mm -hmm. almost like he's feeling the rough uh, or the smooth wood, however it feels to him. He's just like engrossed in this moment, like he just. It's something under otherworldly to him, and he actually like hearing Tyrrhenian like say that they're not going to go with him after being offered this great to him this great opportunity to start over. Almost he he actually begins to weep as tears um, begin to like fall down his cheeks, um, and he he doesn't sob, but. He closes his eyes, and you know it, it, when you do that, and you're crying, it like bubbles up the the tears right there, and it just makes his eyes look welled and and uh, you know puffy and red as he's just completely lost in this opportunity. Which if he had been given this, you know, just months ago, he would have taken it in a heartbeat. Um, and knowing that he can't do that now is just something that is just drives him to almost the brink of of uh, total loss of of his um just this loss of you know uh keeping himself together and not falling to the ground and and um just totally uh despairing and he just looks I... up with like haunted eyes um at from brethel as if like he is in, not it's not love but it's it's just just totally enamored with what these are and the purity of them and he is just completely overtaken with emotion then brethel gently sets estadir down on the soft green grass on the edge of the stream I see spring water runs from your eyes, firstborn. This is not something I have ever witnessed. It is to say that an elf oft does not cry. But dare I also say, not all tears are a sorrow. Firstborn, we may yet meet again in far-off lands to the east, perhaps in another age. For the ant wives and the ants will surely never be parted. We will shepherd the forests where they wander. We will roll in the fields 
and sing beneath the stars. Gaze up into the clouds as it drifts onwards, onwards, forevermore. Our souls will meet again, young thing. He... He's kind of... He's choked. Uh, he has a hard time speaking. Uh, I... Uh, I will search for you. I will look for you. Uh, I am Estetir of the Noldor. I am a poet. And when I must be a warrior... I will look for you and your husband, Fanghorn. Wherever you travel, I will travel there and seek you out and come under your eaves. And no peace, I hope, one day. And he can't take it. He turns his head down and looks at the ground and he, he just begins walking away in utter, utter despair. Fanghorn goes and takes Fenbrithel's hand, and together they stri stride away from Terenian and Estadir. Each stride 15 to 20 yards as they go along the stream, calling out to the trees. Very well. Hmm. I'll inscribe your name in my mind. Among the names of all the many things here in Beleriand. <laughs> Fimbrethil has a gentle heart, but I am Moldower. I fear an end may come to this land you call Beleriand. <sighs> but I hope I am wrong. I hope I am wrong. And he and Fenbrethel then disappear into the bows of the forest that undulates and moves slowly, slowly across the plain to the east. And Tyrrhenian watches them for a, a long time, probably longer than he plans to. He watches them go and unbidden thoughts come of <coughs> earlier times, which times never seemed that great, apart from in the the earliest days when uh, Morgoth was first contained. Um, but virtually all those times seem peaceful now, and he he watches them go and thinks about younger days and happier times walking in forests and the peace he had there and even straying back to thoughts of his wife you know so long gone and he uh, he watches and his eyes glimmer with tears but they go unshed as he just stares and stares and stares into his eyes dry themselves out and uh, finally he he blinks like a man waking from a dream as the uh, the Ents uh, go out of view. And he uh, he turns and kind of almost kind of comes to his senses and turns and sees that, you know, Estadir has got some, some way away. And he sighs deeply and... Now there's no one around, he lets the mask drop and he looks tired in both body and spirit. And he realizes that, you know, he's he's forced his nephew to step away from a dream. Once again he's had to let his dreams go. And this time it was Terenian pushing him to do it. And uh he looks down and the the weight seems to almost bow his shoulders for a minute. But then he takes a deep breath and f makes himself take a step. And then another. And then another. And finally begins to stride and uh, slowly starts to catch up with Estadir. Yeah, the um, Estadir's just walking 
and he he can't bear to look up at the slowly moving forest. He keeps his head down, looking at his feet, and he repeats, well, he says another stanza of the poem. When winter comes and winter wild, that hill and wood shall slay. When trees shall fall in starless night, devour the sunless day. When wind is in the deadly west, then in the bitter rain, I'll look for thee and call to thee. I'll come to thee again. And he just chokes without saying anything else and just begins to walk faster towards the um, human vanguard in front of him. And he feels this utter, um, almost <sighs> anger um, at having to do this. Uh, he thinks that it is not his maybe yeah he 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 just believes that you know this everything is unfair almost like a you know adolescent um n nothing's fair nothing you know why did he get burdened with this this task that he never asked for that sort of thing and uh he wipes his face with his sleeve uh trying to dry his um tear soaked cheeks And Tyrrhenian eventually catches up with him before they reach the uh, the refugees. But he doesn't say anything. He just walks a little bit behind him, a little bit to the side. And um, he, uh, he doesn't interrupt. He just lets Estadir kind of have this moment to grieve what could have been. And uh, then eventually, eventually he will he will walk a little bit faster and end up walking next to him and just just wait until Estadir is ready to talk. Yeah, Estadir. Um, by this time, he's got it together somewhat. Um, he just looks blank faced, um, devoid of emotion now, but. Clearly, Turinian sees uh, his face is, um, you know, his eyes are red and uh, puffy, and he has an, a lot of like color into his cheeks, unlike you know, uh, I would assume uh, a normal expression uh, of a Noldor elf would be uh, kind of placid and. Uh, fair skinned and his cheeks are ruddy uh, and almost like he's been running or um, you know uh, and he turns and looks over to his uncle and says where to now then the humans and our duty and then he sort of pauses for a moment and says hold on to the memories Time may take much from us. The enemy may take much from us. Even our homes. But our memories. Our memories will always be ours. Sad though they may be. Sometimes sadness can be a welcome pain. And, uh... He... He has another mo another of these moments where he wants to find words and doesn't really have the words for the situation and instead nods and says oh, the refugees are a little ahead of us we should uh, speed our speed our stride and uh he starts to kind of stride very purposefully yeah he lets Turinian actually get ahead of him uh he thinks about saying something and you know, he think you know, in his mind he actually thinks about how he envies um the men because their lives are shorter and they have less to actually um, you know, less sadness in their lives and he 
thinks about how some of that sadness does fade with time. He remembers the death of his parents and the crossing of the Helcraxis, and he thinks of other um, things that he has lost. He thinks of Galadriel and what never had happened for him that he had wished. Uh, and the, But then... You know, he knows that these things fade with time, but then he thinks of all the things that he has lost, his sister even. And what has he gained? Nothing. He is on the road with dozens of men, bringing them to safety and watching a childhood fantasy that had come true walk away slowly in the distance. So slowly that it's almost as if he could st he thinks i could still go i could catch them easily i could still do this but he refuses to give in to those urges even though it is a very difficult thing he finds himself stopped and turned and staring in the distance for a long time and eventually he turns and sees terrenian yards ahead and he slowly will follow once again. And as he walks, every so often he looks over his shoulder at this giant swathe of trees slowly moving in the distance. And he continues to do this until they are out of sight. As you catch back up to the refugees... Uh, Arthad lets himself fall back and he casts a look over his right shoulder towards Terenian and Estadir. Why the somber look? We draw close to Brethil. I dare say we will be at the Brithiac by sundown. You've done your job. The men, the women, even Leah's children. They're all safe. You brought them through safely. Do I spy tears? Estadir gives Arthad a, a look that is very, very dangerous. Um, and he says, it is not something you would understand. And he just pushes forward. He doesn't want to talk about this with a human, for sure. Uh, sort of sensing that the situation is, let's say, tense. Um, a Terenian kind of steps up and says, Arthad, good scout. <sighs> How far do we have to journey? Only a few leagues. I will not wag my tongue, Terenian. The words of a man such as me. Even of the House of Beor, they are short compared to the long years and the sorrow that must lie on the soul of every elf. The Noldor, as I've said before, are my friends, and I'll let you suffer your grief in silence. And uh, Terenian nods and says, Well spoken, Arthad of the House of Beor. And... Um, he uh, he starts striding further forward, um, and you know, calls out to the you know as he goes past the refugees, he's saying to them all, "Your home lies a short distance away, or rather, all right, I guess he won't say he'll say the the home of your people lies a short distance away. We have come once again to fair lands, and you may know peace here for a while." As you continue north, uh, the river Sirion uh, is at some parts wide and some parts uh, a swiftly flowing stream is on your left. Um, you continue up the road and eventually as the sun sinks into the west, you see what looks to be an ancient looking bridge known as the, as the Brithioc that spans the, the river Sirion. Um, and on that bridge, you see tall figures uh, bearing spears standing guard at the uh, western edge of that bridge and um, they see the band of refugees coming up the road from the south and you hear uh, 
you hear voices kind of raised and shouts and long. And they come! Men! Orcs, they approach from the south! And you hear another voice shouts, Nay! Nay! Look! There are men! One of them is on horseback! Make way! Make way! Visitors! Visitors! And you hear as you draw close to the bridge, What news from Dorthonian? What news from the north and east? And um, Terranian will um, call to them. We bring only ill news. The shadow lies upon Dorthonian now. It is now a place of shadow. And he'll say the new name that's been given to it, which I can't remember offhand. Um, he said, you know, it now bears the name and says it. Um, we have journeyed over difficult roads and these people are weary please come and aid your kin these are the men and women and children of Laedros and they have suffered greatly uh, Arthad kind of comes to the front of the column and hops down off of his horse and uh, kind of trots across the bridge and you see him meet uh, the lead guard in an embrace then the guard raises his voice. Then come then! Make haste across the bridge. No evil has yet come to the force of Rethil. Our men and women still stand strong and proud. So is it, is it true? There has been great rumor of war in the north. I dare say. At night the sky glows red. Red with wrath. There are whispers of shadow and flame. Then this is the truth. The North has fallen. Um, and Tyrion, as they ride close, he, uh, he hangs his head for a moment and raises it and nods and says, Yes, shadow lies upon Dorthonian. And to the North, there is but fire and ash and terror and the dark will of our enemy. His slaves march upon that land, and their numbers are great. Tell your leaders to make ready for war, for war will be coming. As you say that, uh, the sun sets in the west, and far, far to the north of Sirion, where the river flows like a dark ribbon into the mountains and disappears, there is a glowing red smoky light and as the camera pans along the river traveling to the north you see forms floating down the river at first you see the forms of orcs short and swarthy hacked to pieces some of them missing heads and arms but then among them you see the mutilated forms of elves and men and that is where we will end the session for tonight. <coughs> wow. wow. Good playing. Very cool. Thanks, Bo. Thanks for running. X would have liked this one. No combat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me stop the recording. It just ends. Two yeah, hours was is all that was?